जय श्री मन्नारायण जय श्री मन्नारायण जय श्री मन्नारायण I pay my obeisances to my spiritual master Shri Mat Jagat Guru Sudarshan Acharya Ji Maharaj I pay my obeisances to Lord Shri Ramanuj I pay my obeisances to our Purva Acharyas I pay my obeisances to our 12 Alvars I pay my obeisances to Mother Lakshmi and I pay my obeisances to Lord Shri Mat Narayan I welcome all of you here physically at the Shri Narayan Dham in Durban South Africa I welcome those that's watching this discourse locally, nationally and internationally and I welcome in advance those that's going to be watching this discourse when it is posted on YouTube and the various groups from around the world subsequently. We continue on our ongoing topic which is going to be compiled in the form of a book called the guru principle and i've embarked on this topic because there is a lot of disrespect shown to the guru in sanatan dharma itself people do not know who is a guru and who is not a guru who is a pandit who is a guru so i wanted to bring all of the, these aspects into context and relay it in a compilation so that there's no excuse for those who claim to be sanatan dharmis to find themselves in a dimension of ignorance so like the guru principle is the guru principle fire is fire if a 2 year old child who does not know fire puts its hand in the fire that child the fire is not going to not burn that child that child is ignorant of the fire however the fire is cognizant of it self and the fire will perform its duty to its fullest so if you put your hand in the fire you are going to be burnt fire has no friends no family no relatives fire is fire if you put your hand in the fire you are going to get burnt similarly a bona fide spiritual master has no family no friends no relatives a guru is a guru and if anyone disrespects the guru then there are consequences that that person must face it is for this reason that i am i have embarked on this series called the significance of a bona fide spiritual master because i found out that there is not enough information that is synthesizing the guru principle from a to z so you get information on google with certain aspects from certain saints from certain philosophies so i'm giving you this information direct from the vedas it's as if you are milking the cow itself with your container there is no dilution of the information that i am giving you so that the full potency of milk can only be experienced if it is given to you direct from the cows others yes or no so when it goes to dairy and it when it goes through different forms when it reaches you you not get in that milk which the cow shed at the others yes or no similarly the guru is giving you information that is directly from the vedas so you are getting it in its total potency and this is why 
the Sri Narayan Dham has been successful since its inception. In the first week, week one of my first satsang, which was held in a school with 15 people, week one, I was called to go to Tongat by one of those members who attended the satsang and she said her nephew was on the death bed in a room. The following week when I went back there that nephew was running about. So the potency began at inception and it continues unabated to whoever has faith. Whoever has faith, medical science has been mystified because we even changed their diagnosis 180 degrees. Medical science has been mystified. So in order to administer this potency, one has to be clean in its totality. One has to be absolutely clean in its totality. This stream of spiritual potencies will not enter one who has even one atom of cruelty. You can't even have one atom of cruelty. This Vyasasana is a personification of Lord Veda Vyas. And Lord Veda Vyas is none other than Lord Sri Krishna himself. I showed you in the Krishna week. And Lord Krishna is none other than Lord Sriman Narayan himself. And this is why I didn't have to go to any learning school. I didn't have to go to any learning school to learn the Vedas. For those of you that do not know, I do not know Hindi other than kitchen Hindi. I do not know Sanskrit, but I know every Vedic injunction of the 545,000 verses of the Vedas. How? Especially I was an atheist for about 30 years of my life. So how do I know all of these things? It's because the system is absolute. The system is absolute and this seat becomes the personification of the Supreme Lord himself. For the Supreme Lord is the essence of all Vedic knowledge. It emanates from him. And when the Guru sits here, it is only natural that he starts downloading all Vedic knowledge without any other activation. Yes or no? So if you take your mouse and if you run it on your computer screen and if you press an icon that you want, what will happen on the screen? Avir, you're a computer expert. If you want to go on Google, run your mouse there, and you write there, bottle stores near me. <laughs> bottle stores near me, and you press, you click the mouse, what will happen? All the information about all the bottle stores around you. One flick of a finger. So similarly the Guru is like that 
icon on your mouse when he sits on this Vyasasana, then all Vedic information gets downloaded through him. You understand? Is it a hard concept to understand? If you find it difficult, just remember A and B. A and B. Avir Portal Store. <laughs> See how easy it is? How easy it is. Okay, you understand? So this is how people are mystified. People are curious. Some people also call me a fake guru because they say I have not been to any formal institution. How can I now sit and give information? All the information that I give you, I verify with Vedic injunctions. I have not gone one millimeter of the Vedas in my life. And I stated, and I'd like Vishwadar to pull out this verse that I read, I think last week or last before week. And I said, as a guru, since I started in 2013, I have made many mistakes along the way. I have made many mistakes along the way and I have transgressed when it came to societal law here and there. But I did not make mistakes, neither did I transgress for my own personal capacity. I did it for you. I did it for the ashram. Whatever mistakes are made, knowingly or unknowingly, it's for the ashram. And whatever transgressions I got involved in, or I am currently involved in, it's for the ashram. In my own personal life, before I became a guru, I was a law-abiding citizen. I never got involved with the law. In fact, I was a policeman and I maintained, I maintained law and order. And one of my ardent followers, especially when I'm giving discourses, is Keith, my friend Keith who also came in front here and he gave a small talk when he recognized me outside that I was one of the policemen that was whacking them when they were gangsters, the Dashins. They were from Warwick Avenue, they were the Dashins and he's watching this discourse. He's one of those people that will tell you this guru never took a bribe in the 10 years in a place where bribery was flourishing. My family did not eat one morsel of food from anything that was not sattvic. You understand? Although I was an atheist, I had a problem of not understanding who God is. I only had a problem with God. I never had a problem with society. I was a humanitarian from the time I know myself. I've been helping people long before I became a guru. I was always involved in societal upliftment. I was involved in the politics of this country when I was in Standard 8 in 1978. And that is where my activism started. That is where my activism started, it has not stopped, I'm still involved in politics. Immediately after this discourse, I'll be addressing a hall full of people in Phoenix. So I am integrally involved in every aspect of society. Nobody can come into this ashram, knock this door and say, Guru, before you became a guru, you was like this, you was like that, you was like that. I am a guru for 10 years and I'm a guru where I stayed. I stayed here in Reservoir Hills for 40 years. Nobody can come and knock this door. Nobody can knock this door. Yet I had a partnership. I had a partnership in Aquarius. You all know Aquarius? Aquarius restaurant. 
partnership. I invested a lot of money there. Asoka Hotel uh, invested a lot of money there. I was a partner there. All right, Mavir. When I invested my money, they gave me, in return of my investment, bottles of spirits. All right, that's how I was a partner there. That is how I was a partner. I was a partner here at Reservoir Hills Butchery. Dennis is still there. Go and ask him if the guru was a partner there. Every, day, every week I should invest in half a sheep. Every week, invest in half a sheep. But nobody can come from anywhere and point one finger at the guru. I'm not in some bush. I never opened this ashram in the Eastern Cape. Found some Indians and opened the ashram so nobody knows the guru. I'm on Facebook Live. This live is transmitted in 48 countries around the world. I'm talking to friends and enemies. Friends and enemies. And I made a lot of enemies along the way. Everyone who leaves this satsang becomes a natural enemy. And they have all tried to take me down. Has never happened in 10 years, will never happen in a million years. Nobody can touch this guru. Nobody can touch this guru, although I'm making all the mistakes along the way. Because according to the Supreme Lord, that person who is serving me, if he makes any mistakes, if he commits any sins, I'll burn it. I'll burn it to ashes. Who? The Supreme Lord. So this Guru is untouchable. Many people want to touch the Guru every now and again. Nobody is going to get one millimeter closer to touch this Guru. I've led a principled life from the time I know myself. And again I'm saying, although I was an atheist, I did not believe in God, but I believed in principles. I believed in principles. I was a policeman. I used to do admin in the 80s. In the, I was a policeman in the apartheid era. I used to handle the admin. And sometimes if I was very busy checking my shares at Asoka Hotel or Aquarius, I couldn't go work on the end of the month. They will send the books in the police van to me. They will send the books in the police van. There are policemen that are still alive that will verify. In the apartheid time, they'll send the books to where I was living and I will mumble and fix up because I should do accounting that needed the commissioners needed to go to the commissioner on the first of every month unless it was a weekend all of you understand it's because I was principled I was principled your principles can take you anywhere in the world if you like apple and you don't like banana when there's no apples don't say I like banana be principled. Say, if I like apples, when there's no apples, you must still like apples and don't reject the banana. If there's more banana than you like, bananas. If there's more apples than you like, apples. That means you're an opportunist. You must be one tract and live in that one tract without shifting your principle. Nobody is asking you to like bananas. And nobody is asking you to like apples. But once you made a statement, I like apples, then don't shift to bananas when it's more. That's when you are an opportunist. Do you understand? So in this guru principle, it is very, very difficult. It is absolutely difficult to bring people to the platform to understand the absolute truth. I have also been, stay, uh, been throughout my life I have been accused that I always want to be right. 
that I always want to be right. I've been accused of always wanting to be right. And I'm telling you, nobody has proved me wrong. The only reason I always am right is because I only take an argument when I know the absolute truth. Do you understand? If you know the absolute truth, you don't have to remember anything. If you don't have to remember anything if you are immersed in the truth all the time. Years ago when I was a social activist, I took on a gangster that the entire KZN justice system, police system, and all the systems was vibrating. This gangster should walk into a police station, the captain should leave and run away. He should walk into a court, the judge should call for a recess and walk away. And I said, no. No babies? Judge one? Guru is talking. I took this man on single-handedly. I went 10 years to court. Do you know how long 10 years is in a court case? He tried every trick in the book to evade justice. He still got his one year. He still got his one year. He's late now. But I'm just explaining to you about principles. His lawyer asked me, one accused, why did you make five statements? I said, it doesn't matter, I made five statements. The truth can be viewed from any angle. It will always remain the truth. A lie can only be viewed from the angle that you concocted it. As soon as you change it around, you will see it is a lie. Am I right? So these are the things you need to learn basically when you come to a guru. You can't do what you do at home. When you come to a guru, you have to start changing your home habits to be spiritually successful. Not too much. One small dose at a time. One small dose at a time. Start changing. Don't change with your mouth. Don't change with your mouth. Change with your actions. Change with your actions. What I mean when I say don't change with your mouth. Don't change in words. I follow a guru. I'm such a good person. Practice what the guru teaches you. Practice what the guru teaches you and be the first to acknowledge. Be the first to acknowledge that you are wrong. Show me which guru have stated to the whole world that in his 10 years he has made many mistakes, he has transgressed. Tell me which guru has done that. You understand? I am doing this to show you that I am as imperfect as you. I want you to be my friend. I want you to understand that we are in the same level. If I want, I can be absolutely perfect. I won't be able to work with you. The Guru's job is to work you into perfection. Is to work you into perfection. How relieved you feel when you hear the Guru has made many mistakes. Aren't you relieved? How relieved Avir Bhai is when I say I had shares in Aquarius and Ashoka, Ashoka Hotel. How relieved is he? You understand, Abir Bhai? Yeah, my guru had shares. Tomorrow, 6 in the evening, he'll be in bottle store. His conscience will be telling him, buy or don't buy. Buy or don't buy. Then he'll remember, hey, my guru bought. Okay, let me buy one last time. There will be a time when 
the bottle store will mean nothing to him. There will be a time. But if he always viewed his guru as being absolutely pure, what encouragement he will have to stop? Do you understand? So the guru went through normal material life, every aspect of material life, so that when he counsels you, there is a love relationship between the guru and yourself. Because the guru has been there himself. So at this point, I also want to make an announcement that last night I asked Vishwadar to start looking in India because I made up my mind up to become a sannyasa. You all know what a sannyasa is. So as soon as he finds an appropriate place in India, I'd like it more in south of India, more closer to Lord Sri Ramanuj uh, in that vicinity, and then I will make a trip as soon as the Supreme Lord himself will endorse it. I'll make a trip to south of India and I'll take up my last stage in my spirituality. My last stage in my spirituality. So for those of you that do not know, I was divorced for 10 years and then I got back. And when I got back, there was that story of the missing 10 years from my children. So over the past years, I put my children back on track, both of them. I put them back on track. Whatever they do, with whatever I have invested in them, the result is their story. But from my consciousness and those devotees that are old with me, they will know I tried my very best to give my children what they had lost when I was divorced. So this is what a guru need to do. I could not have abandoned my family and take sannyasin. I have to make sure everything has been sorted out. And I feel at this point in time, I have sorted them out. They are adults. Sherwin is 30. Sean is 36. They have been adequately sorted out by myself. If they want, they can become millionaires. If they want, they can become billionaires. Or if they want, they can just be ordinary people. But from my side as a father to the children, I have already given them all the infrastructure they need in life to, to be successful in life. So as soon as Vishwadar connects me, then I'm going to be gone to India. All right? Sannyasa means I'm going to cut myself off totally from the material world. Sannyasa means I'm going to cut myself out totally from the material world and only concentrate in this ashram. Only concentrate in this ashram. I will try to get a Pancharatra Agama priest that will stay full time at the ashram and he will handle there is a small ritualistic portion that needs to be done. I handle it spiritually, but then once I become a sannyasa, I will need somebody to do these things on behalf of myself and the ashram. All of you understand? So this is where we are heading. This is what my goal and destination is. I've been a guru for eight years, practicing as a guru, and for two years, I practiced as a disciple of my guru. I want you to understand this concept. I chose it voluntarily. When I went and took my initiation, I am a guru from that day of taking my initiation. But for two years, I hid my identity as a guru and I practiced as a disciple to my guru. 2013, 
2013 October to 2015 October, I held four satsangs a week around Durban. Four satsangs a week around Durban. I used to sit on that side. There was no Vyasasana. We used all these halls that were around. And I used to sit there. I used to sing my bhajan. People should sing the bhajan. I used to get up, give a discourse like this and go back and sit down as a disciple. I did that for two years. So nobody can say this man wanted to become a guru. You understand? It was only when I was pushed by my guru. When I was pushed by my guru to now function as a fully fledged spiritual master did I then get the seat see the seat I bought it with my own money so no devotee can repossess it when our relationship breaks and that is why I'm on this one Vyasasana from 2015 couldn't be repossessed because I know devotees just now Avir Bhai will get so angry with me and his bottle store story one morning I'll go in the back I won't see any roses <laughs> in my rose garden you understand so I wanted to buy this Vyasasana so it don't get repossessed and Dana don't look so appealingly at the Vyasasana. If the Guru goes, no one can sit on this Vyasasana. Only a photograph of the presiding Guru. This ashram cannot be taken over spiritually by anyone. No one can, no one can replace, uh, replace a founding Acharya in any system. No one can replace a founding Acharya. Alright, Yajwan, you must get your own seat if you carry on with the Guru, you become a disciple and if you want to become a Guru, I don't know how many people will attend the satsang because Yajwan will be a deadly <laughs> Guru. If you do not comply on day one, you will be running up this driveway, you leave your car and run away up this driveway. Alright. So, this is where we are, this is what an ashram is about. <coughs> Every one of you that have walked down this ashram would have felt something without even meeting the Guru. Without even meeting the Guru, you would have felt something in the atmosphere. That that you feel in the atmosphere is the attribute of consciousness of the Guru. That is the attributive consciousness of the Guru. You can feel it 15, 20, 30 meters away around this place. When you walk, you'll feel the attributive consciousness of the Guru. And the only reason you can feel this attributive consciousness of the Guru is because the Guru's consciousness is not contracted in karma. The Guru's consciousness is not contracted in karma. When you can feel the Guru's consciousness down there where the trucks are parked on this end of Makutir coming down the driveway then you know the Guru is for real. You know the Guru is for real. You must be able to feel the Guru without seeing him. You understand? Because the Guru's consciousness is not contracted within the body. When the consciousness is contracted within the body, it means you are still in karma. Guru has no karma, so the Guru's consciousness pervades this entire land that the ashram is built on. Then, somebody said, I'm fighting with all the Gurus. I'm fighting with all the Gurus. I am a bona fide spiritual master in the Sri Sampradaya. I am a bona fide spiritual master in the Sri Sampradaya. 
and Lord Ramanuj 1000 years ago he fought with all the gurus that were there in his time who Lord Ramanuj 1000 years ago he fought with the false philosophy of the gurus existing in his time it is a duty of a bona fide spiritual master to kick out false philosophies and i'm going to give you a vedic injunction that i don't sit here and glorify myself by attacking other philosophies it is my incumbent duty to do so it is my incumbent duty to do so so i'm giving you a verse from the vedarta sangraha of lord shri ramanuj 129 and i'm quoting this particular kind of knowledge of the nature of the highest bhakti comma is brought about only by bhakti yoga already delineated comma which grows by continuous practice comma and is assisted by karma which follows jhana full stop bhagwan parasha says comma a man who performs the duty of his varna and ashram ashrama comma can worship the supreme person vishnu semicolon no other way pleases him and this is from the vishnu purana 2 colon 8 colon 9 close quote the highest brahman the supreme person incarnated on earth to for the upliftment of the whole world comma has himself ordained comma open code listen how a man devoted to his own duties can attain realization full stop by worshiping the lord comma from whom proceed all beings and by whom all this is pervaded comma through such duties are appropriate to oneself comma one attains realization gita and the quotation is from the gita chapter 18 45 and 46 full stop thus the supreme is attainable only through bhakti comma which is the fruition of the spiritual development described 130 the philosophical approach developed here in is one that has been presented by the vedas comma whose import has been clearly revealed by the ancient commentaries on vedas and vedanta and has been unanimously adopted by the great ones like bhagwan bodhihana comma tanka comma dramida comma goha deva comma kapardin and barusi full stop by this the extra vedic schools of the extra vedic schools taught like those of karvaka comma sakya comma alukya comma aksapada comma kasapanaka comma kapila and patanjali along with the schools of some followers of vedas whose version is perverted are refuted are refuted so all these other schools of thoughts a thousand years ago lord ramanuj refuted this is the commentary of lord shri ramanuj 1000 years ago he refuted all these schools of thoughts that i given you and somehow some of them have mushroomed up here again somehow some of them have mushroomed up again and i am now 1000 years later refuting that same philosophies and schools of thought that have been refuted by lord shri ramanuj this is what a bona fide disciple of the shri sampradaya has to do all of you understand any questions sita any questions so when i sit here and i refute f- philosophies by other gurus i'm cleaning the world 
I am cleaning the world of false narrative and filth of false narrative and filth and I'm showing you and I'm pointing you to the absolute purity and truth absolute purity and truth your mind have to be clean and pure to accept and assimilate the purity that I am expounding you have to clean your mind up all of you understand so I just want to read a few verses from the from the Guru Gita itself for those of you that need further confirmation on the Guru status and why you come to satsang this is the Guru Gita is spoken by Lord Shubha to Mother Parvati in the Skand Purana so I just want to make this clear before I read this Gita there are 18 Puranas there are 18 Puranas and Lord Brahma is the speaker of the 18 Puranas when the mind of Lord Brahma is in Satagun he speaks the absolute truth and purity and those Puranas have been categorized as Puranas in Satagun. Then he speaks six Gitas when he is in Rajogun and when one is in Rajogun one ego is inflated and he makes himself superior and then he speaks six Gitas in the mode of ignorance and this Gita and this Purana sorry the Skand Purana is in the mode of ignorance then you would ask me Guru how can you expound something that is in the mode of ignorance so there are 200 verses here in the Skand Purana the law is the law in the Vedas is if any of the verses spoken in Tamogun and Rajogun is consistent with the Vedas in Satagun then it is a verdict injunction are you understanding although these verses are spoken in Rajogun and Tamogun we do not reject them in its entirety we only reject those verses that are spoken in Tamogun and Rajogun that have no synthesis with the Vedas. So I'm going to choose from these 200 verses, verses that are found in the Bhagavad Gita, verses that are found in the Upanishads, verses that are found in the Vedanta Sutra, because those Vedas are the authority in the Vedas. Are you understanding? So I just wanted to bring this forward so there is no complication later on this discourse when some other people find it on YouTube and wherever it's to be found. All right. So I'm reading this verse. I'm not going to number it. I'm just going to read it. And I quote, The knowledge of Brahman resides in the mouth of the Guru. Full stop. The disciples get it by devotion to the Guru, full stop. In the three worlds, this fact is clearly enunciated by divine sages, comma, the Pitris. Who are the Pitris? And learned men. Who are the Pitris? Ancestors. Your ancestors, your pa parents, great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents. The next verse, the syllable G-U is the darkness and the syllable R-U is said to be light, full stop. There is no doubt that the Guru is indeed the supreme knowledge that di dispels the darkness of ignorance. This has been said by who? 
लॉर्ड शिवा लॉर्ड शिवा जी यू मीन्स द डार्कनेस एंड आर यू मीन्स द रिमूवर ऑफ डार्कनेस ऑन अकाउंट ऑफ द पावर ऑफ रिमूविंग डार्कनेस कॉमा द टीचर इज नोन बाय द सिग्निफिकेंट नेम गुरु नेक्स्ट वर्स द लेटर जी यू डिनोट दैट इज बियॉन्ड द थ्री गुनाज and are you denote that he is beyond forms full stop because he is free from the gunas and forms he is called the gurus so i'm just going to give you an example to explain this verse when i look at all of you i don't see the beautiful clothing you wearing i'm seeing three colors red blue and white i'm seeing three colors avir bhai even you wear white shirt and next week you can wear white pants you can put a superman's outfit full white i'll still see the spiritual color of the three gunas white is when you are in satagun blue is when you are in rajogun and red when you are in tamogun so the guru sees these three colors that your consciousness is vibrating in so that's how the guru knows when you walk in the door how to accept you in the ashram how to accept you in the ashram and what discourse to give so that you can be in either of these three gunas i've given you a message i've given you a message it doesn't matter where you are guru does not judge anyone but the job of the guru is to remove you from the lowest guna and catapult you in up to the highest guna that is the job of the guru so that is why the guru does not discriminate nate against anyone like the job of a law lecturer in his segment is to teach you the law that he knows you don't have if you know the law that he knows what is the use of going to university so he have to bring your ignorance in terms of law out of you and implant law in you yes similarly the guru uproots the ignorant out of you and supplants it with divinity one hair at a time sometime one hair the whole year <laughs> depending on your readiness depending on your readiness to accept what the guru is saying no one is a failure in the guru's eyes no one is a failure in the guru's eyes the minute you come to the guru and you come to the ashram it means you passed your threshold in this lifetime you've passed your threshold in this lifetime and the guru got all the lifetimes in this creation guru still have 155 trillion 40 billion years to move another hair to remove a another hair because the relationship between the disciple and guru is eternal it's always there this is why bona fide gurus are never in a hurry i like some of y'all i don't want to liberate y'all because i need to play with you in my <laughs> next round when i incarnate and when you incarnate avir bhai i like to keep you here right up to that 155 trillion years is over All right 
All of you understand? So you must come to ashram at peace. When your merits expire with the Guru, you'll find a way to fight and leave. But in this lifetime, whatever merits you have acquired will fructify in the next lifetime. And the merits that you are seated here with the Guru is your merits from a previous lifetime. You understand? This merits you seated here is not from this lifetime. It's from your previous lifetime. And when you attended all the satsangs here, when you did your seva, whatever you did for the Guru or for the ashram, you can cash it when? Next lifetime. So you are always in a win-win and Guru is always in a super win-win. <laughs> super win-win. Alright? So I've come across in my 10 years if I ask somebody what deity is your favorite deity many people have told me my favorite deity is Lord Shiva okay but if you do not follow Lord Shiva's instructions can you be his favorite aspirant? Are you understanding? From your side you can say, I love you Lord Shiva, you are the greatest, you are the love of my life, I can do anything for you. <laughs> From whose side? From your, side? From your side. You can make the best laddus, best mitai, banana, you can pour milk on him whole day, you can pour milk on him whole night. Lord Shiva is still a stone. Only when you follow his instruction, then he opens his eyes and say, Oh, it's been you that's been pouring milk on me. It's been you that have been bringing bananas to me. You understand? He only opens his eyes when you start following his instructions. He also appears as Hanuman Baba. Lord Shiva also appears as Hanuman Baba. How many Hanuman Baba devotees here? Just put hand up. There's Bhabi right in the back. Only give me the first line of the Hanuman Chalisa. You don't have to know the whole 41 or 42 lines. Can't hear you. I wonder, Mike. So even Hanuman Baba, even in his incarnation, Lord Shiva is telling you, go and fall at the feet of your spiritual master. These are Vedic injunctions. Guru is not making this up. These are deities that have been found by you and your family years and years ago. Yes or no? Uh, you read that line just like and I'm not saying this when I say pirohits and when I say pandits and when I have something negative to say about them it's not all of them it's not all of them it is those that are guilty of what I am saying they are also I've met in my lifetime as a guru very, very principled pirohits and pandits. Okay? So when I cast an aspersion, I'm casting those that are looking for the two and a half grands per prayer. I'm after them. Alright? Some I, I don't know with this rise in diesel if they've gone to three grands. <laughs> Alright? So you'll get in your kata and chanda Avir Bhai, the very first mantra these Piro hits read is Guru Ra Brahma, Guru Ra Vishnu, Guru Ra Devo Maheshwara, Guru Ra Saksha, Param Brahma, Tasme Shri Guru. Do they read this mantra? Yes. Has anyone ever stopped at this mantra and said, please people, 
do you have a bona fide spiritual master that is what they supposed to do immediately after reading this mantra because this mantra is the prayer opening invocation for any prayer guru ra brahma guru ra vishnu guru ra devo meshwara guru ra saksha param brahma tasme shri guru ra namaha they suppose but if you say yes and they connect you to a guru you think next year you'll do katha and janda you know why they don't stop there but there are those that stop there and they'll ask you for a photograph of your guru they are i've met them okay so i'm not casting an aspersion on all of them but this is how important the guru principle is this is how important the guru principle is can you survive without mathematics can any one of you survive without practically knowing maths you don't have to go have a degree in mathematics but practically knowing maths can you survive similarly you cannot survive without the guru principle you cannot survive without the guru principle you live you will live but you won't survive you understand because the guru principle is inherent in every atom in this universe every atom in this universe is pervaded by the guru principle the next verse The holy lotus feet of the guru shine like two pearls of the entire shrutis full stop the guru is the exponent of the truths of vedanta therefore one should worship the guru so there's a selvan naidu in every arti in this ashram selvan naidu if those of you that go on our facebook page during alti he'll write there hi devotees i'm also a devotee please expa- explain why you worship guru g r u <laughs> all right you'll find it there and today and i went personally and i explained to him why you worship guru all right but you'll see today in today's arti he'll still put his comment there jessica from hospital responded to him in between her operation okay he still does not get it i i don't know how to explain i hope is a lord shiva devotee and lord shiva is saying in this verse and let me repeat not only to him but all of you the holy lotus feet of the guru shine like the two pearls of the entire shrutis full stop the guru is the exponent of the truths of vedanta full stop therefore one should worship the guru who is saying this lord shiva is saying you must worship the guru if you are a shiva follower uh, die hard what's are the word they use staunch, staunch thank you <laughs> i'm a st- staunch shiva follower i'm a staunch hanuman baba follower and i'm a staunch vishnu follower so if you are a staunch vishnu follower lord shriman narayan says you must start with the guru lord ram says you must start with the guru so if you are a staunch lord ram follower start with the guru if you are a staunch krishna lord krishna follower he says you must start with the guru mother kali says you must start with the mother durga says you must start with the all the mother form say you must start with the guru how you know this because all the 30 330 million devis and devtas they themselves have a guru braspati so it is a vedic injunction so everyone above you 
everyone above you, all your seniors, human beings are here, then you got your pitars, what your pitars are telling you, your mothers, fathers, grandfathers, great grandfathers, what your pitars are telling you, follow a guru. When they were down, they couldn't tell you follow a guru because they were in a mode of ignorance, those that did not send you to a guru, but now where they are? They in Pitralok, Lord Shiva is saying this, that even your Pittars are asking you to follow a guru. So, your own ancestors are asking you to follow a guru. All the Devis and Devtas, 330 million of them, and you love them. Uh, Navratri is starting just now. The ladies will be, you name it, they'll be in a super zone. <laughs> Those mothers are telling you, follow a guru. Lord Shiva is telling you, follow a guru. Lord Brahma is telling you, follow a guru. There is no entity that is not telling you to follow a guru. But what some of you will do after you leave here today? Ah, I'll do what my mother and father and granny and grandfather said must do. But now I'm telling you in this discourse that those of them that are late, they are also telling you to fa follow a guru. It's a Vedic injunction. I read it to you. It's a Vedic injunction. I read it to you. This is why I said the Guru exists in every atom in this universe because no living entity superior to man is not instructing you to follow a Guru. All of you understand? So no matter how staunch you are, if you are staunch with your parents, great-grandparents and their traditions, they are even telling you to follow a Guru. But some of you, the veil of ignorance may never ever leave you. You understand? So it's not the Guru that's telling you. Not the Guru. Guru is only a messenger. Guru is a messenger of the Supreme Lord. Today I'm a messenger of Lord Shiva. I stated verbatim what Lord Shiva stated in self. So I'm going to end up with the last verse. By the mere remembrance of whom knowledge dawns in one automatically, semicolon, he, in bracket the guru, is one's entire wealth, full stop. Therefore, one should worship the guru. Salvan Naido. <laughs> guru is now starting to answer you directly. So this is an instruction by Lord Shiva. So let's come down to worshipping the Guru before we close up. The Guru has a mortal body. What does mortal mean? This body one day, okay, maybe in this discourse I'll also instruct you uh, Vishwadar and Hemita can crop this part and keep it in the archives. That at the front of the ashram, that front, where my kutir <coughs> is, maybe there'll be a three meter <coughs> by three meter sunken down. We'll work it out with the municipality. Sunken down concrete enclosure. All right. When I pass on, then my body must be put into that enclosure and that enclosure must be sealed. Enclosure must be sealed. I won't take cremation. I'll be residing there making sure. <laughs> I'll be making sure. And if you all don't listen yeah, midnight I'll visit you all. <laughs> I'll visit y'all midnight and y'all know 
I'm a lover of Kanpati. What is Kanpati? So when you get a tight one at night and you jump out of bed, next morning run there and apologize. Next morning, run there. So that's where I'm going to be buried. Not buried, I'll be in a seated position like this. In a seated position, you can cover me with river sand, fine river sand, and you concrete the top. Around that on top, there will be a either an octagonal or a hexagonal Samadhi place where you can come and start before you come to the ashram. So I wanted to say this, it's legal unless I change it, which gurus don't normally change what they say. So this is where I'm going to be. All right. And I can foresee many thousands of you crying there and saying, Guru, when you was alive, when I could talk to you, I was so lazy to come to you, I half believed you. Now you're gone, I wish you can come alive again. Sorry I didn't interact fully with you. I can see thousands of you doing that. All right? Abir Bhai, whilst Guru is around, make sure you can extract the most from the Guru. Okay, Jai Shri Manarayan.